you give it up to Rick Steves. Thank you, Vivian. It's great to be here. Well, I've been in a lot of places, but I can't think of a better place than right here, Seattle Hempfest, beautiful August day. All right, well, as Vivian said, I'm a travel writer. And for me, high is a place. Ah. It's a good place. It's a sweet place. It's a sweet place where my speakers sound better. Suddenly I'm a good cook. Conversations are like stray cats. It's a place sometimes I want to visit. A lot of people want to go there. But you know, our government says we can't go there. Why? Today there's 80,000 Americans doing time in prison because they wanted to go to that place called High. Now, there are times when our government can say we can't go there, and that's, that's right. But if our government says we can't go to a place, there better be a good reason we can't go there. And there's no reason we can't go to High. I believe that the responsible adult recreational use of marijuana is a civil liberty. Yeah! No apologies necessary, it's just having fun. It's a civil liberty. Now, it's a drug, and I don't want to promote it. We don't need to promote it. We're trying to change the law that says people who want to enjoy it can do it. We need to acknowledge that it's not healthy. It can mess you up. It can be abused. It can be addictive. It's not for children. If you drive intoxicated by anything, they should throw the book at you. If we want to get it anywhere, we need to acknowledge that. We're, our government is fighting a war against marijuana. It's a perpetual, expensive, losing battle based on lies. It's costing our society billions of dollars of years. It's locking up hundreds of thousands of people. Every year, 800,000 Americans get arrested for marijuana, and then they've got a record. What I bring to the equation is a European perspective. I've spent a third of my adult life in Europe, and in Europe, a joint's about as exciting as a can of beer. It's just no big deal. Now, we have a drug abuse problem in our country, and Europe has a drug abuse problem in their country. We can learn from each other, and we can do a better job minimizing the harm that drug abuse causes our society. In Europe, they've learned that if you have a drug abuse or a drug policy, it should be motivated and assessed not by how many people do you lock up, but by how does it reduce harm to your society. Yeah. Harm reduction. And in Europe, they're into pragmatic harm reduction. And what they've found is that if you take the crime out of the equation, you can treat drug abuse as a health problem and an education challenge, and you can help your society minimize the harm that drug abuse causes. Now, the United States is really into, moral, uh, into legislating morality, and Europe has learned that that does not work. It's futile. My European friends tell me that a society has to make a choice. You can tolerate alternative lifestyles or you can build more prisons. Yeah. In the United States, we're building more prisons. And in Europe, they've learned that you can, you can tolerate alternative lifestyles and the result is we've got more people in prison than any civilized country in the world. We lock up eight times as many people per capita as Europeans do. Either we are inherently more criminal or there's something messed up with our laws. And today we can sort that out and we can explain that to our society in general. Now what shapes American drug policy? Fear, it's all about fear. It's reefer madness, generations of lies and fear. We've got to take the scariness out of it. Frankly, this group here is kind of scary to people who are most afraid of drugs. You're not going to solve the problem by being more scary in their face. You're going to solve the problem by explaining things to them in a way that lets them not be afraid. If we want to get anywhere in this struggle, we've got to stop being scary and being reasonable and let people know that there's not a whole reservoir of people wishing they could just ruin their lives with drugs if only it was legal. A lot of people out there think that if marijuana was legal, everybody would smoke it. Well, I'll tell you, in Portugal, they legalized the consumption of all drugs 10 years ago. And what's happened? Nothing. 
It doesn't go up. Use doesn't go up. Anybody who wants to smoke pot is already smoking pot. They just take the crime out of the equation. That's a beautiful thing. A lot of Americans who are afraid of marijuana say it's a gateway drug. Well, in the Netherlands, they've not locked up a pot smoker for 25 years. They've got a track record. They care about drug abuse just as much as we do. And they liked their system. They took the crime out of it. And what they realized is their hard drug-taking population is not getting bigger. It's getting older. Young people can experiment with marijuana and not be buying it from criminals on the streets. I'll tell you, if there's anything gateway about marijuana, it's, it's illegality. Because when it's illegal, you can only buy it from criminals on the streets and they've got a vested interest in getting you into more expensive, more addictive, and more profitable drugs. If you don't want marijuana to be a gateway drug, then legalize it. Now this hemp fest is a lot of fun. It's a great celebration of the cannabis culture, but if we're gonna legalize marijuana, we've got to get serious and mobilize. I mean, we're all understanding this, we're all hip to the fact that there's nothing dangerous about the mature, adult, responsible use of marijuana, but our government needs to understand that. And the best way to help our government understand that is to support advocacy groups that are fighting your battle and my battle in the State House and in Washington, D.C. They are waging dogged struggles on small budgets. And if you're not supporting them with a few bucks, you're not helping out. I'm a board member of Normal. I've been a board member of Normal for 10 years. I've got great respect for the work that they're doing. They need your help. These advocacy groups are not charities. They are services and they're doing our hard work. Now we're at a crossroads today. We're at an exciting crossroads where we can actually make some difference. Like Prohibition in the 1930s, imagine what it was like in America when they realized, hey, that, that the laws against alcohol are causing more problem than the alcohol itself. Courageous people stood up and explained that to scared people, and they realized it's stupid to criminalize alcohol. In the 30s, when they dropped Prohibition, they didn't say booze is good, they said the laws against booze are causing more problems than the booze itself. We're there today with marijuana, okay? We can do that, but we've got to communicate. Mayor LaGuardia in New York City back in the 1930s said that if you've got a law on the books that you don't intend to enforce consistently across the board, the very existence of that law erodes respect for law enforcement in general. It demoralizes your police force. Right now, we got a law on the books that there's no serious intent to enforce across the board. If they arrested everybody here tomorrow in Seattle, this city would be one much less interesting place to call home, wouldn't it? Now I'm telling you, I'm a hard-working, kid-raising, church-going, tax-paying American citizen. And when I work all day and I want to go home and relax with a little bit of marijuana, that's my civil liberty. Is that right? It's not about hard on drugs or soft on drugs. I'm just proposing that we learn a little bit from Europe about pragmatic harm reduction. Take the crime out of the equation, recognize marijuana, the, the responsible adult recreational use of marijuana as a civil liberty, and then we can be smart on drugs. Does that make sense? I hope so. Hey, nice to see you all. Have a great time and happy travels, even if you're just staying home, all right? Thank you.